In this episode, a mysterious threat appears in the body, which Neutrophil, Killer T cell, and NK cell were dispatched to investigate. They soon found out that the cells in the lead location have replicated out of control. Cells go through a cycle of replication known as the cell cycle with the following stages. Gap 1, where the cell increases in size and prepares for DNA synthesis. Synthesis, where DNA replication occurs. Gap 2, where the cell continues growing. And mitosis, where cell division occurs. The division process is heavily regulated by extrinsic and intrinsic factors, deciding when the cells can proceed or if they should pause. Mutations in cells and their regulatory factors cause their cell cycles to go out of whack, becoming a cancer cell which replicates uncontrollably. This forms a growth known as a tumour. I would like to point out here that the words tumour and cancer should not be used interchangeably. A tumour is used to describe a growth of aberrant cells, but is benign where the cells do not spread to nearby tissue. Cancer refers to when the tumour becomes malignant and the cells can spread to other tissues. For a cell to cause cancer, it would need to acquire certain traits and characteristics, known as the hallmarks of cancer, of which there are a total of 10, but not all are required. A cell with uncontrollable replication has the traits of sustaining proliferative signaling and invading growth suppressors, with increased production of growth signals or receptors, and decreased production of growth suppressors or receptors. These signals can also influence the division of other non-mutant cells. Due to mutations, cancer cells arise regularly, even in healthy bodies. The only reason why they don't cause much trouble is because our immune system deals with the threat almost immediately. Mutations result in cancer cells presenting antigens which are non-self, risking being spotted and killed by killer T cells. So, cancer cells avoid immune destruction by down-regulating expression of MHC1. However, by doing so, they risk being killed by natural killer cells, which target cells lacking MHC1 molecules just like how NK cell knew that the cell who guided them was a cancer cell, while killer T cell remained none the wiser. Cancer cells can also inactivate T cell activity by expressing CD80-86 or PDL1, which binds to CTLA4 or PD1 respectively on killer T cells. While the battle rages on, Red blood cells were tasked with a large order of nutrients to be delivered to the location. When a tumour has increased in size, it would need more nutrients. However, the large size means that not all the cells have the same access to the nutrients and oxygen delivered by the blood, preventing the tumour from growing. Therefore, cancer cells induce the formation of blood vessels, angiogenesis, to increase the blood flow to the tumour. Inducing angiogenesis ensures that all the cells in the tumour have access to nutrients, creating a condition suitable for tumour growth. Cancer cell eventually grew wings, ready to move on to a new location. This is metastasis, where the tumour becomes malignant, which is when the condition is classified as cancer. At this point, some of the cells in the tumour break off and get carried by the lymph or blood and establish a new secondary tumour on another tissue. Fortunately for the body, reinforcements arrive before that could happen. 